All right, so let's do an example. Determine the level curves of the following function of two variables. Okay, so the basic idea is, is the same for these types of examples and, and problems. You set the function equal to a constant, and then you choose different values for that constant. Okay? In this case, I'm only going to choose non-negative values for this constant, because if you put in a negative number here, uh, you, you can't solve... You, I mean, the, the, it doesn't mean anything. Okay? So let's put in c equals 1. So if I put c equals 1 here, I get x squared plus y squared equals 1, which is a circle centered at the origin and radius 1. Okay, now if I put in, say, c equals 4, I get x squared plus y squared equals 4. Now that is a circle with center at the origin and radius 2. And then c equals 3, uh, sorry, sorry, c equals 9 gives x squared plus y squared equals 9. Again, another, another circle. Okay, so I'm going to draw those circles now. Okay, so that's going to be the top one. The next one. And finally, the outer one. Now, I'm drawing these things in the xy plane here. Okay, so this is one, two, three. Okay, well, what do these look like in three-dimensional space? Well, remember, this number here is the height above or below the xy plane that this, that this circle lies in. So this one and this one are going to be the same curve at a height 1. Then we're going to go up a little higher to 4. Okay, so, that, so it will be 4 on the z-axis. And then you would even go higher to 9. Okay. All right. So here's a similar problem, but it's slightly different because we have a square root sign. So does that change things? Well, again, we let f equal a constant and then choose different values for our constant and see what, uh, what we come up with. All right? So... I'm just going to choose c equals 1. I'm going to get root x squared plus y squared equals 1. So if I square both sides, I'm going to get a circle again. If I choose c equals 2, again, rearranging that, I'll get x squared plus y squared equals 4. And c equals 3 gives x squared plus y squared equals 9. So basically I get the same uh, circles that I did before for my level curves. Okay. But here the C values, I remember, are the height above or below the xy plane, right? So, this circle will lie one unit above the xy plane. This circle will lie two units above the xy plane, and this circle will lie three units above the xy plane. Okay, so these are the level curves, and these are the contour curves. Okay. Now, note that the f and g from the previous two examples, they're different functions, but they have the same level curves. Okay, if they're different functions, then we would expect them to have different graphs. In fact, 
If we go to Maple and use the plot3d command, here's the plot of the first function, and here's a plot of the second function. Okay, notice they look similar, but they're different. This one's rounded at the bottom, and this one's pointy, like a cone. So the important thing here is, how can we explain and predict these differences? Yes, level curves are, and, and, uh, and contour curves are good in one sense, but this shows their real limitation. Okay? And the answer is to do with an idea called sections. Okay? Now, sections are basically the intersection of vertical planes with a surface. Okay? And it's usual to choose sections that can involve the XZ plane, uh, sorry, the YZ plane and the XZ plane. All right? So let's do an example and see, see how it all works. We're given this function. We want to calculate the two usual sections of, of, this, uh, of the graph of this. Okay, so... In the XZ plane, we have Y equals 0. So we go up here and we plug in Y equals 0. Okay, that then gives us Z equals x squared, which is going to be some sort of parabola, okay, lying in the xz plane. In the yz plane, we have x equals 0, so we go up here and set x equal to 0, and we get something like z equals y squared. Again, another parabola. So let's just put this all together. Here's our three-dimensional setup. Okay, I'm actually going to draw S2 first because it's, it, it's a little, little easier. Okay, so imagine you're looking down the barrel of the z-axis. So the z-axis is coming out of the screen at you. This is going to be a parabola. Right? Now, for S1... No, sorry, that's S2. Now for S1, imagine we're looking down the y-axis, okay? So I'm going to redraw it In this case, the positive x-axis is there and the positive z-axis is there. Again, I've got a parabola z equals x squared. Okay, so this is S2, our section S2. This is S1, our section S1. Okay? All right, another example. Determine the two usual sections of, of, this, of, of the graph of, of this function here, G. Right? Again, setting y equals 0 and x equals 0, we, we can um, come up with these curves, S1 and S2. And... In a similar way, we get these type of lines here. Okay, so this is going to be S2. Again, I'm just drawing that because it's a little bit, little bit easier. This one's going to be S1. All right, so this is something like Z equals absolute y, z equals absolute x. All right, so what do we do now? Well, we can take our level curves and our sections and combine them to form our surface. Okay, so how do we do that? Well, the basic idea is to couple the method of level curves with the method of sections. Okay? All right. So, from the previous examples, this is essentially what we have. Our, our level curves were concentric circles. Okay? And the contour curves that were all lying above the xy plane, so we want to pull them up 
along the z-axis. Okay, now one of these sections, we calculate it to be the following. So what we want to do is combine these two curves to plot something like a, a, a surface in, in three-dimensional space. How do we do it? Well, the circles are bounded by this curve here, and they're all lifted up above the xy plane. Okay, so we can form something like a bowl. All right, so that's our surface there, called a paraboloid. Similarly, if we combine our level curves, okay, again, I'm being a bit rough here with the sketch. I'm only going to draw one section in here. All right. Now, the contour curves associated with this lie above the, the xy plane because c was always positive. And they're bounded by this v-shaped um, curve. So putting this all together, we get something like this. Okay, so in this case, we get something that looks like a cone. Now, there are a lot of other surfaces. Okay, there's um, ellipsoids and uh, and lo lots of other lots of other surfaces. But um, here's an independent learning exercise for you. You should try this to see if you can. Uh, um, get a feel for, for what I've discussed today. So a function is defined in the following way. They want to sketch the graph of this function. Okay, and to give you a little hint, what you should come up with is something like this. Note, this particular picture has a section here, a section here, and all you really need to do is work out the level curves. Okay, so that's a little bit on functions of two variables and how to sketch them. Um, next time we'll talk about partial derivatives.